Welcome to the third and final film in the series Customize Your Warm-Up, in which I will be exploring the importance of including a slow element within your warm-up routine. Throughout this series, I have looked at concepts through the lens of performance science. Performance science might be perceived as more relevant to academics than performers, but in fact the very opposite is true. While creativity and spontaneity are essential for a truly inspired performance, Without an analytical approach and a rationale to formulate a systematic process, acute anxieties triggered by inconsistencies in learning preparation will continue to pervade and invade every stage of your learning and even into the performance itself. Retrieval of well-formulated instructions resulting from a systematic process initiated by the step-by-step -step system is the analytical tool associated with science. It is a deliberate and methodical approach that will forge the often elusive connection between what you do in both practice and learning and in performance. These clear and transparent instructions are vital and for this reason the warm-up must represent all the different aspects that will make up the performance piece or project. Having transparent instructions, a bit like the workings out on a mass board, will enhance efficiency of retrieval, increase task focus, boost confidence and thereby alleviate any doubt or fear, thereby reducing anxieties. OK, let me demonstrate what I mean by playing you a small section of a melody I played you earlier. This formed part of the regular warm-up in my early years of playing the clarinet. Purpose is an important word which should permeate learning and performance. If you can articulate your purpose for playing a scales, exercises, slow pieces in your warm-up, you will already have a clearer idea of what you want to achieve. The individual elements selected will be your starting point and will also become the means to help you diagnose any problems or instabilities as the preparation advances towards the performance. Most critically, you will also gain an understanding in how to regulate those elements. Fluency can often be confused with intuition when we are referring to technicality, but intuition is used for creativity, inspiration and spontaneity, while fluency is more ascribed to technicality. Performance is a science as much as it is an art. The warm-up, while in every sense being a daily fitness programme, 
also gives us the opportunity to assess the differences that can occur from one day to the next. A regular warm-up routine will give us the skills to accommodate small differences, be they temporary loss of instructional focus, impacting on technical fluency, internal or external stresses. Having the resources to manage these differences, which can occur from one day to the next, will become incredibly powerful on the performance day. So, what was my purpose for selecting and playing this piece in my early training years? It was because it gave me the opportunity to assess my tone, control the dynamic range, feel how my read was behaving, and hear how smoothly I was managing to play between each of the notes. I loved playing this melody. It was, for me, super special. Focus is like pointing a light on a particular spot while not obscuring what lies in the shadows. Having a focus gives the opportunity to assess specific elements within the overall current action you are undertaking and the all-important what is needed when to assess how well what you are doing is working. The importance of this was keenly realised when, in 1992, something happened to me in performance, which, to this day, I will never forget. I can say, without fear of exaggerating, that this was a significant year for me. I launched my recording label, Clarinet Classics. My father died, and a significant personal event all happened. It was also a busy concert year, which included several performances of Messiaen Quartet for the End of Time. I was only a small way into the solo movement and I started to lose control of my lip. This had never happened to me before and in a sustained piece that relies utterly on control, it was terrifying. By the time I got to the end of the movement, it was all I could do to stop myself running off stage. The rest of the performance went without further issues. But once off stage, my colleagues greeted my profuse and distressed apologies with stunned confusion. They had no idea and had not heard what I had heard. Thinking back, probably my only coping mechanism was to play the quiet phrases as soft as possible, disguising what I could of a tone which I could barely recognise as my own. That experience had a profound effect because despite the familiar performance nerves, I had never lost control and this scared me rigid. If it can happen once, it can happen again. I therefore had two choices to give up playing altogether, or to recreate what had happened and find the cause or causes. So, I set to work re-enacting the loss of tonal control from which I recalibrated embouchure, oral facial muscles and breath while observing which notes could be more susceptible. With the memory still fresh, while I could not entirely recreate the emotions, I could recreate the feel of the physical effects. Without knowing why and how it happened, this awful and terrifying episode would hold me and every performance I would ever give to ransom. Those lessons and the commitment to the slow element within my warm-up continue to assure me that while it could happen again, I am every day working to ensure as much as I can that I have the resources to deal with it. The next example I will play is from one of my current regular slow warm-up pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. 
Musical demands require an accomplished, secure and indeed confident technique. There are so many incremental elements within a task and therefore we will often intuitively create a priority order. As in multitasking, some elements are assigned higher attention status while others, which might be of lower risk, are assigned a more routine status. While it might be reasonable to intuitively create these lists in everyday life, the pressures within performance could cause instability. The more formalised the approach, and by that I mean conscious and aware, the more reliable and less susceptible you will be to the debilitating effects of feeling self-conscious. The ability to not just have the intuitive, creative and imaginative ideas, be it in music, words, movement, culinary, visual, is one thing to implement those ideas practically to the audience demands technicality. This could not be more appropriately illustrated than by Philippe Petit and his infamous and astonishing walk between the Twin Towers. While his meticulous training and copious planning were essential in pursuit of such death-defying feat, his ability to keep focused on the day and to retrieve and process those clearly defined instructions were essential to finely tune and accommodate factors such as the variable tension of the wire and the wind speed. Also, the emotional and psychological effects were distractions which could have so easily threatened his balance, quite literally. It is interesting that many performers will find slow phrases or performance pieces harder than those which are fast and seemingly more technically demanding. Some might attribute the causes as too much time to think, but this is the fastidious attitude and the state you want to create in every part of your warm-up and throughout your preparation and practice. Not all forms of performance involve life-threatening risk, but all performance involves high risk. Embracing and not denying that risk exists is the first and perhaps harder step in acknowledging that risk is a prerequisite of performance. From this position, you will be more committed in taking the next strategic steps in reducing the risk factor to the minimum. This is also where you will reap the benefits from those nutritional elements within the warm-up I referred to in the previous exercise film in this series and build your confidence from your competence. This library of resources will then give you a secure foundation on which to build and to deal with the complexities and demands that will come your way in learning, preparing and ultimately the delivery of your performance. I have not included studies within the series but feel it would be remiss of me not to refer to their importance. Distinct from exercises, they are like intense technical pieces and are learnt and performed within a specific time frame, thereby testing the durability of your technique and also your ability to stay focused. I was brought up on a diet of fantastic studies and must admit to loving the challenge of decoding them and working out strategies which would afford a fluent outcome when I perform them in my next lesson. They are my substitute to crosswords and Sudoku. 
I feel that they are invaluable on so many levels and therefore I use them in all my teaching. The last example I will play is from a piece by an educator, writer, teacher and wonderful composer who I am so pleased to call a friend. Paul Harris is a clarinet player who has not only written brilliant studies but also many pieces. His adagio forms part of my regular pool of slow warm-up pieces with tonal control between the registers and top notes, breath support and expansive dynamic range. This piece, beautiful piece, not only has a brilliant training resource but also to keep reminding myself of the immense responsibility that all performers have to their author, composer and audience. I cannot emphasize enough the amazing benefits you will gain from your daily warm-up. Commitment to a regular warm-up and by regular I mean no less than five times a week will build your technical facility and your intellectual ability. Your processing velocity and most crucially your psychological stability. This will give you motivation and determination alongside stamina, both physical and mental. Flight hours are not just an essential requirement for pilots, but I believe for all performers. However, not in the robotic way repetition is often used. Almost everything we do in pursuit of our daily lives started as actions we had to learn, but over time have become assimilated into fluent actions. Having the flight hours behind tasks secures connections in a process and processing speed, building familiarity and therefore confidence always keeping awareness and tuned in with what we are doing, how we are doing what we are doing, and how we are feeling about what we are doing. In science, this approach is referred to as embodied cognition. Some might prefer to use the term holistic approach. You might even prefer to customize a term which feels more meaningful and personal to you. Customization once again takes center stage. I'm sure you will have customized your living space, choosing both essential and decorative items. Having proved you can customize certain areas of your life, you are well equipped to customize your warm-up. Establish the length or variable lengths of your warm-up depending on the time available and then select the scales, exercises and slow pieces for your daily warm-up routine. In that way, you will take ownership and customise your warm-up which will empower you in pursuit of excellence in all your endeavours.